And there was three of them, especially David tied himself. Oh, if you don't forgive us, we're just going to tie. So the parents saw a lot of songs say, hey, man, you know, you can't blackmail me. I'm just going to ask a lot what to do about y'all. Y'all remember that? And so then, it says, when the prophet refused to release those who had tied themselves to the pillars after they had stayed behind and they did not accept their charity after their release, he was simply making it clear to all that none, uh, that none of this was within his authority. It all belonged to Allah alone. The prophet himself would only do these things if he was authorized to do them. So when they come and take on this time, we all oh, my blessings he said that sign. <laughs> you just stay there until Allah, you know. In some cases it says till Allah find a way out. In one eye I don't remember exactly what it's related to, till Allah find a way out. But we of the Asada Moon movement are proud to adopt this inspiring name, inspiring name. As a Sabakun of those who have distanced others, they are the vanguard. Those who anticipate what should be done, then do it without waiting for acceptance or approval. And we'll get into that in just one second. A Sabakun move forward in a premeditated fashion, blade blazing new trails and going where no one has dared to go before. We've completed one of those stages right now. They are true pioneers, exceptional trailblazers and pace setters. There is a Jamaat here in America who have consciously taken the original Asaba Kun as described in parts of the Tafsir book as role models. So we have taken the Asaba Kun, the original Asaba Kun, as role models. They didn't wait for the main group, Isna, Ikna, all the other people. You know, I got an invitation September the 12th, that's a couple of days ago, from CARE for something they had on September the 11th. <laughs> now it has all the dates say, you know, you, when you get something sent to you, it has a date when it comes. <clears throat> and it has Imam Abdul Ali Musa. We invite you <coughs> to uh, Gala Extravaganza Fundraiser. And it's, uh, I just got it uh, maybe yesterday or something. And, and I looked at the date, I saw oh, I'd be happy to go. So it was September 11th. I said, hmm, today is the 13th. And it just came last night, which was 12, it was before 12. So boy, that's nice. But see, care is not our role model. Iguana Muslimin is not our role model. Imam Hassan Obama is one of our role models. But not the modern Iguana Muslimin. Imam Khomeini is one of our role models. But not the brothers in the foreign ministry today. And the brothers who seem to be practicing the concept of hujiti, which I'll get into as role models. We must emulate these pace setters who set everything aside to serve Allah and His Messenger. They led the way for the advancement of Islam. Uh, we won't go to all of this stuff, but it says fulfill the covenant of Allah when you have entered into it, and break not your oaths after you have confirmed them in me, you have made Allah your surety, for Allah knoweth all that you do. And be not like the women <clears throat> who breaks into 
on twisted strands, the yarn she has spun after it has become strong, nor take your oath to practice deception between yourselves, lest one party should be more numerous than another. For Allah will test you by this, and on the day of judgment, he will certainly make clear to you the truth that wherein you disagree. If Allah so will, he could make you all one people, but he leaves straying whom he pleases, and he guides whom he pleases. But ye shall certainly be called to account for all your actions, and take not your oaths, this is repeating itself, to practice deception between yourselves, with the result that someone's foot may slip after it was firmly planted, and ye may have to taste the evil consequences of having hindered men from the path of, path of Allah, and a mighty wrath descend on you. Verily those who plight their allegiance to thee do no less than plight their allegiance to Allah. The hand of Allah is over the hands. Then anyone who violates his oath of allegiance does so to the harm of their own soul. And anyone who fulfills what he has covenanted with Allah, Allah will soon grant him a great reward. Okay, just in brief, <clears throat> let's look at the people who have made Baya, right? well, here in D.C. and in Oakland. Okay, now we have the eyes before a sabakun, and we laid it out. Even in this ayat, uh, we have many of the hadith. We go over this a hundred times. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Whoso obeys me obeys Allah, and whoso obeys the ruler obeys me, and who disobeys the ruler disobeys me. Verily, an imam is a shield that fights in his absence and protects him. If he enjoins the fear of Allah and does justice, there is reward for him for that, and if he enjoins otherwise, there is against him. Okay, now this so-called Imam, he has a criteria that he has to go by. That the people have taken Baya and allegiance to, right? Okay, so now they have uh, taken allegiance. And that allegiance should be taken to build a strong community, not as a means of deception to deceive the people in thinking that they got a strong, well-organized body who intends to do well. And if the Imam himself fulfills all of his obligations, right, then the community should stand with him. That was an agreed the fakha alayhi means that they all uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Salmit uh, reported we took our allegiance to the message of Allah over hearing and obeying in danger, in peace and pleasure, in anger over reward upon us and on the condition that we shall not snatch an affair from this deserving person, that we shall speak the truth whenever we might be and in the cause of Allah, we shall not fear the slander of the slander. We won't be worried about what people say. And also, on the condition that we shall not snatch an affair from this deserving person, except when you see a clear infidelity near you from Allah with its clear proofs. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Whosoever takes off his hand from Baal will meet Allah on the resurrection day while there will be no proof.
proof for him, and whoso dies while there is no veil on his neck, he dies the death of the days of ignorance. Sahih Muslim. And the word used in Arabic, they die on the bed of Nifat, hypocrisy. I heard the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, There will soon be a revolt and a rebellion. Whoso wishes to divide the affairs of this people while they are united, strike him with the sword whenever he remains. So, if we have a community, we're going along all right. Nobody ran off with anybody's wife. Nobody stole money. Nobody did nothing. Right? Okay, now, <clears throat> somebody come and try to break that up. The hadith is a Sahih Muslim. Said he cut his head off, my goodness. Of course, you know, I think everybody knew the opposite of what uh, Allah and his messenger uh, tell them. Yeah. Who said takes an oath of allegiance to the man and gives him the palm of his heart, let him obey him if he can. If another comes to quarrel with him, strike the neck of the other. This is again, Simon. There's a lot of, of uh, things in here about allegiance. So, there was no misunderstanding and uh, and this we have along with many others we have our goals uh, Sabakun mission statement right all the ayats that confirm our community oh you believe obey Allah obey the messenger and those charged with authority over you. Ulil Amr Minkum. Not the people in Saudi Arabia, not the people in Iran. Ulil Amr, Ulil Amr Minkum. Those who have authority from amongst you. Okay. If you differ in anything amongst yourself, refer it to Allah and His Messenger. And if you believe in the last day that is best and most suitable, okay, if we deal with some of the people that we've dealt with, we have to ask ourselves, have they ever uh, presented any case about anything? Because it says, if you differ, if there's something come up, do you come in and holler? Do you pull guns? Do you do any of that? No. The first thing you do, right, there's a whole book on it. It did not, it did not yeah. differing in you know, the process of uh, differing and how to deal with it. Yeah. It says the same thing we say. If you have any problem, take it to Allah, the Quran. If you want to, su to support that and back it up and elaborate on it, go to the Hadith. That's why all of our stuff, if you notice, even the delicate political mumbo jumbo, is based on Quran and Hadith. It's based on Quran and Hadith. Okay, now, that's the way we do. We do. The Prophet Sallallahu said in Pyramidi, I have urged the believers to be ever mindful of five things. Jama'ah, Tanzim, organization, hearing and obeying the Emir, Hijra and Jihad. All of these we laid out and more. 
in Quran and in Hadith. Uh, we don't have time to go over each and everything, but before we did anything, we always had a whole list of, uh, even on motivation, on leadership, on all of those things. We use the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be kind hearted to the believers. You know, listen to what they say. Don't be harsh hearted to them or you'd run them away. They're human beings. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to be talking crazy sometimes and they ain't going to make no sense. But don't tell them, you damn fools. Right? What did you say, brother? Will we do this here and here? Then it'll produce that, that, that. We might be able to get out all right. Don't say it. I'm just saying what the, we know the eyes on management, on leadership. Allah is telling the prophet, don't be harsh hearted against the people. You, it, it, it includes things like you're the prophet. You have divine guidance. They're going to get their guidance from you. They're desert Arabs. They're lucky they, they don't even brush their teeth. Hardly. <laughs> right? Before, they didn't take no baths to leave. They had to wash up five times a day till you came. They was desert Arabs. They didn't, they wasn't nothing. They was going in the back door on wires and stuff and backing up all kinds of kind of water. They, they, they had serious customs. So if they say something stupid, be kind to them. Listen to what they say. Yes. Wasn't that, wasn't that dealing with the idea of, of uh, them leaving him at Uhu? You know how, how they, they left him? They left the props for some by himself and then he called them and then later on, um, you know, people asked about, and then he said, he said, don't be hard. Harsh hard. Yeah. yeah. That's, so, is that is that that's that's one of the things that's uh, uh, the ayat is right there in with all of the it's a Surah Ali Imran, ayat 159, 160. That's all with that uh, people running away from me. They supposed to be on a few ayats before they supposed to be standing guard. Mm -hmm. Then they run off after the booty, then they got this. You see, the point I was trying to make is that in that particular situation, you're talking about his life. Yes. His life was on the line. Right. So when he comes back, a lot of times him don't be harsh hearted. Right. When they left him and he could have been really harmed. So that's pretty okay. serious. We we took that that right uh from uh, there's many books on management and the management style of private peace here on it. And it's included with all of that, but when we remember it, we remember it most. Of course, it's in the whole situation. But if you look at what it says, that is a, a management principle of the prophet peace be upon him. You see what I mean? So First and foremost, uh, when we come up on any situation in leadership, see, uh, in Sri Lanka, many places I've given lectures on the management style of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon In fact, we have some articles on management in Islam and all of that. And so, the way we're referring to it right now, is that this is the principle of leadership and management that covers any and all situations. But it was revealed in accords to that situation which was very decorous, just ahead of it. Three eyes. They had left their place and run off looking for the booty. You know, and they got one chastisement after another. Okay.
block for many of the messages before thee, though the scoffers were him then by the things they mocked at. I'm going to try to speed up a little bit because we now have to get to uh, what we were really here to talk about today. Uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the people in general. Uh, and one group I'm going to talk about right now is the Iranians. You know, okay. Uh, when I say Iranians, I mean the Iranians that are here in the United States, I mean, that have taken up uh, the offices uh, that relate to the Islamic Republic. And just like we have many groups, we have out of the same group, we have the original group that we worked hard with just a little bit, because at Berkeley that was the Iran House before the revolution, 78, 77 and all. But that was a mixture of Iranians, it was Afrik, uh, jazzy Iranians and, and Muslims too. Okay. And after the revolution, uh, we opened our masjid right after the revolution. And in general, we opened up our masjid to the, to the brothers. A lot of big shots. If you hear about the Larajani brothers, right? Javad Larajani was in Berkeley. A whole lot of the big shots. If you see foreign ministers, they was over in San Francisco. Our masjid was home. Uh, we made the brothers feel at home. We totally supported uh, Imam Khomeini after a a brief study, I said, this is it. And so we were totally in support of it. Okay, we knew, that, we knew that the Islamic Republic was not perfect. In fact, we knew it better than the Iranian brothers who was getting newspapers from home, and then they would go home and they would come back, some of them would say, man, a lot of stuff they, they're telling us is propaganda, you know. But see, the brothers didn't realize that after a revolution, you're doing as best you can, you got a war going on. And it's not lies, it's not, you're trying to inspire the people. You know what I mean? But see, when you're young, you are idealistic to the point that you see things, bubble gum is bubble gum, juicy food is juicy food. You know what I mean? But in a battle, in a, in a big war, you say, okay, it's all gone, it's okay. Don't matter how make bubbles, it's okay, it's gone. In other words, if you lived through the rebellion here and saw how Negroes act, if you lived through the African Revolution, you know, participating in some ways, you don't begin, you cease to judge people by this puritanical, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's unfair, it's unrealistic. Except we did that for Imam Khomeini, he did it all the way. The rabbi has done it. Okay, the problem we have right now is this. Everything that the revolution was struggling for, it's accomplished in spades. First of all, to survive, to survive. Okay? Export of the revolution. <laughs> the revolution experts make support to Lebanon. Hey man, they got people scared in Yemen, Syria, all over the world as remnants of the, the Islamic Republic. People are fired up under that ideology. 
Now, here's the problem we have. People mixing good deeds with bad deeds. Remember, we went this one today. Some are just total hypocrites. Some mix good deeds with bad deeds. Now, right now, I'm going to deal with the Iranians. That in the group, there are some who evidently are hypocrites. They're hypocrites. They're hypocrites because their policy. Uh, this is the Kipler, right? That's the Kipler. They are hypocrites. They are hypocrites because they mix good deeds with bad deeds. That's some of the ones now. There are some who are monophics. They are monophics because if, uh, if we're having a program, if we're having FITNA in Oakland, and one of our old friends, huh? Stay the head. That's the kid again. If we if we if we have a program and everything is set and moving, and we have a group here that if we have Fitna and Oakland, right? And uh, let's say one of the nice Iranians is married to a European lady. And the European lady come here and ask, if, say like, if I'm going to get a divorce, which I have, I have a divorce, and I live downstairs, because I want our family, you know, that's 31 ways to divorce, I have a book right back there, so don't worry about it, you know, you want to get thicky on it. And, and that's from the Sunni perspective, don't get into our other friends. Hey, I listen to lectures on the subject from the big boys. So anyway, hey man, you know when you roll dice, you can lock them boys together and roll them out and they go out together. Doom, 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 doom. Anyway, so anyway, I remember peer group pressure. The lady comes in and said, where is the sister? And I said, Hell, I don't know. And don't give a almost use the F word. Who are you coming here? You know what I mean? Then, this divorce was a big deal. So, over in, in country two, the big shot said, hey, this is before. Divorce. Now they know I'm talking about divorce and I picked the day goals. We want your, you to bring your family over. We're going to take you all over the country, you know, like tourists to see Persopolis and all the great attractions and, and, and Iran. And the whole family's going to come. So I said, sure. They're going to give you a big house, they're going to give you cars, they're going to give you, like, you know, like when we go there, you know, you see them different by the cars with flags on the front and guards, sometimes uh, they, they, they do that, you know what I mean, they pick you up and you've got, got his machine guns there, and, uh, you know, shoot during the birdie part of the revolution, we'd be driving in traffic and, and one of the big bins is in there. You should imagine the traffic there. You can't get by. The guys would get out to the, in the middle of the road, pop, pop, pop. Then the car would give a little bit of a siren at moment. He wants to hear the siren. And it is. So, now, as the people downtown is so into what I'm doing that they know that it's because I've engineered them and I'm testing them. See, how deep does this go? They don't know it because they don't know colorism. They don't know that the Negro is testing them. How deep does this hypocrisy go? How close, how deep are you into Imam business? 
deep as the cover. And the thing about it, after my leg, Sister Bahia and them is all in the same crew. Remember, people give that day, oh, we swear to God, we're going to do this. What, to help you or to make your slip, foot slip? So what I'm saying is, right now, with the country too, so everybody understands our position, we're totally satisfied with the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's not perfect. But for the battles that it's been fighting, so the Imam Khomeini's time, it was him, that, that leadership. So it's different than all the other places. Everybody's not cowards, so why they can't get themselves together? Malayati Faki. Malayati Faki. Okay, now, during the time of Imam, nobody could talk about because uh, uh, he is a Malayati Faki, and that's just acceptable. After, a lot of people may not accept the Rahmah. I'm not saying that's the problem. But also, there's a mixture of things going on all along. There's careers. People who are in this rebellion help managing demonstrations because they're looking for their career. There's some who go back home, and they go back home to participate in the war. They go back home, you know what I mean, to help the country develop. There are some that stay here. And they stay here for various reasons. In the meantime, the FBI is meeting with them all during the early parts of the revolution. And we're telling them, do not talk to the FBI. They all say, no, it's okay, we can, they're going to play mind games. I so, no, they're going to knock some of y'all over. And you don't know how many. Because in the first years, they have a group that's here, but they all come from overseas. Many times they know each other and their families and all of that. So they can keep, the reason they was able to keep a solid group so long is because of that. But after many years, that's going to begin to break down. Because the government will go to, brother, like, one of the lawyers, immigration lawyers, last year when we did a program in Houston, he was talking about the law, and he's an immigration lawyer. He said that one half of all immigrants uh, approached, of one half of all of his clients 